11 years and a pro bowler for 10 of them, though he never appeared in a playoff game. That's foreign territory, but one of the all-time greats now at the NFL Network, Joe Thomas, stopping by today. So Bills, Bengals tonight. Sounds like the world loves Buffalo. I like Cincinnati. They get better protection. They can run it. They can throw it. I think the Bills are too Josh Allen-centric, but as a former left tackle, all-time great, what worries me about Buffalo is the weakest part of their team is the part that protects Josh Allen. He is so important to that team. And when you look at the Bills, they, they to me, I just see somebody that is running sometimes because he has to, not because he wants to. But Buffalo is awe-inspiring. They're Tyson, knockout punch, big plays. What do you make of the Bills? Can you win a Super Bowl, in your opinion, with an offensive line that sometimes feels like a liability? I think it's going to be really tough for the Bills, and that's why I like the Bengals tonight because the Bengals, the reason they made the playoffs and they made the Super Bowl last season was their defense. It was one of the stories people didn't really talk a whole lot about, but their multiplicity that they can bring on defense. They can play three down, they can play four down, they can play five down, and they find your weakness up front, and then they just attack it over and over and over again. And when you're going into these playoff matchups, I think it's less about who's the better team in general or who has the better record and more about in this specific matchup of what they do well and what we don't do well, who's going to win out and some of the more important things. And I think with the bills, not being able to block for Josh Allen is a huge weakness going into the playoffs. So when you watch that Niners defense, Joe, um, maybe you face the Ravens a couple times where they had like pro bowlers in every single unit. Talk about the pressure Uh, that a great defense, because the Niners have pro bowlers just everywhere. The pressure it puts on an offensive line, I think Sean Payton just said he thinks they're best in class, best team in the league. I think they have the best roster in the league. I'm not sure if they're the best team. But go back to your career, the best defenses you faced and the challenges they presented. Well, the challenge is, now you have your weakest of your five offensive linemen, probably in a one-on-one matchup against a pro bowler. <laughs> Usually if you go against a team, like if you look at the Browns, they have Miles Garrett and that's kind of it on yeah. their defensive line. And it's pretty amazing the amount of pressure and sacks that Miles gets without really any extra help. But on almost every play, Miles is getting double teamed with the guard and the tackle. And he's usually getting a chip from a tight end or a running back. But that's not the case when you got three or four guys that can rush the passer because you can't leave guys, especially in the middle of the pocket on an Island when it's a huge mismatch. So if you're struggling on the inside, your guards or your center, the last thing you can do is leave him to try to go help somebody on the edge because that exposes the fastest way to the quarterback, which is right up the middle. So the, the Buccaneers have struggled offensively all year. If you go look at the numbers, it's anemic. Mike Evans disappeared for a month. Then yesterday, um, they explode. My question is, is that the real Bucks, or was it a great matchup because Carolina was all dinged up at corner? Yeah, I think it was a good matchup. So when you're banged up at corner, you don't have the time to get your rush there. And for me, the big weakness for the Buccaneers most of the season has been their offensive line. They can't block a little bit like the Bills, but even worse. And so Brady, as fast as he gets rid of the football, he was still getting hit. Yeah. Trying to deliver the football in two seconds. But when you when you have injuries at cornerback, now that even speeds up Tom's timing in the pocket. And so you have no chance of being able to get there, even with a weak offensive line. So I know people are probably jumping right on the Bucks bandwagon right now going into the playoffs, but I don't really believe in them because there's a lot of teams in the NFC that can rush the passer. If you look what the Eagles have been doing, you look at some of these other teams in the NFC, they can get after the quarterback up front. Uh, the 49ers we were just talking about, like that is going to be a problem from a matchup standpoint that I don't know what the Buccaneers would be able to do in the playoffs. So outside of left tackle, I think the New York Giants, who will be a playoff team, you could argue they could rebuild the entire offensive line. Are you surprised that they run the ball effectively? elevated Daniel Jones effectively when outside of left tackle, there's not a lot of greatness there. How do you hide flaws up front? Because the giants, I don't think Daniel Jones is a spectacular talent, but his numbers are going up with day bowl with an O line that in some spots is not very redeemable. Well, they got a good running back. Um, and I'm a little bit surprised to answer your question, but I'm not overly surprised because I played for Brian day ball in Cleveland and I've been a huge believer of his for a long time. Every time 
the Browns coaching staff was looking for a head coach. I was saying, Hey, don't forget about Brian Dable. He's in Buffalo. He's doing great things. Um, because when you look at his resume, he's been an offensive coordinator at a bunch of big time places under a lot of really yeah. good head coaches, obviously his time in new England, but then he was with Nick Saban in Alabama. He was in Kansas city. Um, he was in Miami. Like he has a very diverse background in o- offensive football to be able to pull from. And so every week when he goes into the game planning, he's going to be able to pull what his team will do the best against the weakness of the defense because he's been doing it in his career as an offensive coordinator for a really long time. So he's really good at finding the disadvantage for the defense that he can call an offensive game plan to put his offensive line in advantageous positions. Now it doesn't always work obviously because those guys on defense still get paid, but he's one of the best head coach offensive coordinators in the NFL at finding what his guys can do well and trying to utilize that to take advantage of a defense's weakness. Joe, um, I, I said there's a difference, and you know this well, between calling plays offensively and having an identity. I thought the Packers earlier in the season were calling plays, and then about a month ago, they found an identity, which is we're 5-0 and when we run it half the time. We don't have enough weaponry in the perimeter. We have an excellent O-line, two excellent backs. And I watched them the last couple of weeks, and I'm like, oh, it's not just calling plays. Go back to your career. I, I think feel, I feel like Green Bay now, even though they may have limitations, they know what they are. They know what to lean into. And it just feels so much different than just calling. Pl- I see a lot of teams. I don't even know. I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. They just have playmakers. Did you ever have a team that you thought really had a great identity? Uh, we never made the playoffs, so I'm not sure we ever had great identity. But I'll tell you one thing. You're onto something with the calling plays thing because I, I look at two types of offensive coordinators in the NFL, and, and both are bad. One is the guy that just looks at his play sheet and it's like, oh, third and six, I think we'll go with this, right? And the other guy is the guy that gets so locked into what he thinks their identity should be that he's like, all right, it's third and two. We have to go with the inside zone. And then they become predictable. So one is unpredictable without an identity. One is predictable and the defense can call a game plan to be able to shut them down. So finding that happy medium, I think, is where the Kyle Shanahan's, the Brian Dayballs of the world, that's where they are. And that's why they're so good. And that's why their teams have these identities. Um, And I think the challenge of finding different creative ways to run the same concepts in the same situations. So if it is third and short and you are a really good inside zone team, finding different formations, different shifts, different personnel groupings to make it easy on your offensive line and your blockers. So they're doing the same blocking concepts. You're running back. He's still reading the same keys, but from a defensive standpoint, it looks totally different to start. So you're not getting a jump on those tendencies. And I think that's where the wizardry of offensive football is. And I see the green Bay Packers doing those things where they're doing a better job of disguising what they're trying to get to, even though they know that their identity is to be able to run the football and set things up from the run first at Joe Thomas, 73 going to be a hall of famer NFL network full of insight. He likes uh, the Bengals tonight. So do I, I feel like I'm on an Island. It's a very close game. I'll take (laughs) the team at home, less mistakes, fewer mistakes, very good situational and a wildly underrated defense because they don't have a ton of pro bowlers, just really good players. Joe, it's great seeing you. Thanks again. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.